Good morning, Integrated Topics students. Ms. Connor here for today, which is May the 4th, which is Wednesday, and also May the 5th lesson, which is Thursday. So we had the homework, which we're going to review. And any missing assignments, remember the last day for that was going to be or is going to be May the 5th by 2.05. So the homework that you had last night, <clears throat> we had four problems. And there's an asterisk next to the fourth problem. So with that fourth problem, originally it was 10B squared minus 15B equals AB minus 1. And that 8 is supposed to be a negative, OK? So going over the homework assignment so we can go over an assignment, which is actually going to be graded. So we had 2y squared plus y plus 1. My GCF is 1. My leading coefficient is 2. So therefore, I am multiplying the first and last terms together, which gives me a negative 2. Then I have to think, what two numbers multiplied together would give me my negative 2 and add it together to get my middle term of that plus 1? The answer to that should be 2 and negative 1. So since my variables are y, this is going to be a 2y, and that's going to be a negative y. So this 2 is also positive. So what we're going to do is bring down that first term, bring down our last term, so we have our 2y squared here. We have our minus 1 here. And now we have four terms. So every time we have four terms, we're going right into grouping. So that means these first two I'm going to group, and then these last terms I'm going to group. <clears throat> With the first parenthesis, greatest common factor is 2y. So in order for me to fill its parenthesis, I need to divide everything by 2y. So when we do the division, we're going to have y plus 1. We have a minus sign on the other side. I'm going to change colors here. Greatest common factor with the 1's is a 1. And to fill its parenthesis, I need to divide everything in here by that negative 1. So this 1y right here is really a negative 1y because that minus sign that's out there. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. A 1 divided by 1 is 1. And then we're left with the y. So you can say 1y or you can say y. Then you have a negative 1 divided by a negative 1, which gives you a positive 1. What do you notice? Inside the parentheses are exactly the same. So I should have y plus 1. And then what's left over is going to go into its own parentheses, which is 2y minus 1. And then this right here, these are your factors for our original trinomial. Looking at number 2, <clears throat> we multiply the first and the last term. My GCF is 1. My leading coefficient is 9. So 9 times a negative 8 will give me a negative 72. So what two numbers multiply together will give me a negative 72 and add it together will give me a plus 6. So as you think on, you could say, all right, 12 and negative 6. Since my variables are p, so it's going to be a 12p and a 6p. Now I'm going to bring down my first terms. I'm going to put my plus sign in front of that 12 because it's positive. So I have 9p squared and I have a minus 8. I have four terms right here, so I'm going right into grouping. So I'm grouping the first two, grouping the last two. Greatest common factor for the first parenthesis is 3p. So to fill its parenthesis, I'm dividing everything by 3p. So now here I have 3p plus 4. Other parenthesis, we got our minus sign, so we're going to bring that. Greatest common factor in this parenthesis is 2. And to fill its parenthesis, 
I got to divide everything by this negative 2. So now I have a 3p plus 4. What do you notice? Inside the parentheses are exactly the same. So I have 3p plus 4. And then what's inside the parentheses, which is left over, or outside the parentheses, I should say, will be my 3p minus 2. This, or these, are the factors for my trinomial. Okay? Number 3. Leading coefficient, this time is a negative, but we're still doing the same exact thing. So we have a negative 6 times 10, because my leading coefficient is not 1. My GCF is 1, which this will give me a negative 60. Now what two numbers multiplied together would give me negative 60 and add it together to give me 7? So I know a lot of people said 10 and 6, but once you do that addition, it doesn't work. 20 and 30, when you do addition, doesn't really work. How about 12 and, almost lost my mic there. How about 12 and 5? So they're both k's, but one of them has to be negative. The 5's got to be negative. So from here, bring down that negative 6k, bring down our plus 10, going right into grouping. Greatest common factor for the first parenthesis is actually going to be a negative 6k. So as I mentioned in the last lesson, anytime your leading coefficient is a negative, you want to pull that negative out. So we're actually going to be dividing everything. I forgot my square. We're actually going to be dividing everything inside that parenthesis by a negative 6k in order to fill its parenthesis. So then here, you have k, but you have a positive divided by a negative, so that will be a negative 2. On the other side, we bring down our minus. Greatest common factor for that one is 5. So that means I'm dividing everything inside this by a negative 5. And this 5k is actually a negative 5k, so that means I have a k. And then a positive 10 divided by a negative 5 will give me a negative 2. Every time you do the grouping, your parentheses are always exactly the same. So that's my GCF for that expression. And then I'm writing down what's left over. And then this, or these, are your factors for your trinomial. For the last one, we have an equal sign. So that means eventually we're going to be solving. So first things first, before we can do any factoring, we have to set this equal to zero. So then saying that, I have to add 8b to both sides. And I have to add my 1 to both sides in order for that equation to equal to 0. So what do I get? I get 10b squared. And right here, I have like terms. So negative 15 plus 8 gives me a negative 7b. And I'm bringing down my plus 1 equals 0. I can't combine that 1 with anything because that 1 doesn't have a b. I can't combine that 10b squared with anything because that's the only b squared that's on that side. The only two things I can combine are right here with those b's. So now, my GCF is 1. My leading coefficient 
is 10. So that means I'm multiplying my first and last term. So 10 times 1, which gives you 10. Now what two numbers multiply together will give me 10 and add it together to give me a negative 7. So hopefully you said a negative 5 and a negative 2. Since my variables are b's, they're going to be b's. And just like before, we're going to bring down our first term, bring down our last term, and we're going to go right into grouping. Since it's equal to 0, we've got to bring down that equal to 0 as well. Greatest common factor for the first one, we have 5b. And the reason why I didn't put that negative, because this 10 is not a negative number. Okay? If that leading coefficient is a negative number, just like how we did for the, first, the last one, notice right here, my leading coefficient was a negative number. That's why I pulled that negative sign out in front. Okay? So let's go back to this one. So, in order to fill this parenthesis, we have to do the division. So this will give me a 2b minus 1. Okay? We have a minus sign. Greatest common factor with 2b plus 1 is 1. So to fill its parenthesis, we're dividing by a negative 1. So that means we have a positive 2b, and then we have a minus 1 equals zero just comes down long for the ride so we don't forget that we have to do some solving later. So greatest common factors we got 2b minus 1 and then inside the other parentheses we have 5b minus 1 and then we're bringing down that equals zero. So now it's factored. Now we have to solve it. So 2b minus 1 equals 0. And we have 5b minus 1 equals 0. Remember, we're going to set them equal to 0. So once we solve, we add 1s to both sides. Over here I have 5b equals 1. Right here I have 2b equals 1. Now we want to solve for b, so we're going to divide by 2 over here. And over here I'm going to divide by 5. On this side, sorry, it's a b, equals 1 fifth. You can leave your answer as a fraction or you can set it as a decimal. And then over here, I got b equals 1 half. So meaning, one half and one fifth are the numbers. If I plug back into my original equation, we'll make that equation equal zero. All right? So after they did this, I had them do two problems, which I graded in replacement of the grade for this homework assignment. So gave them some time in class to do the two problems. Once they did the two problems, I wanted them to create a thinking map. So to jump ahead, and I can actually show you the thinking map after all this lovely stuff. So these are the things that we've learned just as a refresher. And this thinking map, and I know you're like, oh, wow. This thinking map is really to help them with the whole process of factoring, okay? So I just took everything that we dealt with, with factoring, going all the way back with the greatest common factor, when we were solving with one terms, two terms, or four terms, okay? So when we're solving with just a binomial, when we're solving with a trinomial, when we're solving with a four-term polynomial. What was your thought process? So with the first box off to the left, I have GCF, and I have three examples. The first two examples deal with the two and the three term polynomial. 
Okay, so that's example one and that's example two. So we have two terms. What do we do? We pulled out the GCF and we put everything else inside the parentheses. So, and I gave you the whole process of how to solve. First, you find your greatest common factor. Then you're going to divide the original expression with the greatest common factor. You put it in the parentheses. You place the GCF in front of the parentheses. So this is all in the notes, but this will be a quick one-stop shop for everyone that's doing factoring. Okay? The four terms is example three. And this is just like, how do we do the solving? How did I do all this? So I show you three examples, and then I also give you the exclamation down here. Okay? So say you don't have a GCF. Your GCF is one. Okay? Now you need to look at the middle column, which is your A equals one. Does your leading coefficient equal one? And if it does, what's the process of it? So you ask yourself the question, is your GCF 1? Is your leading coefficient 1? So your next step should be splitting the variables into two parentheses. That's what we did right here. Then we had to think. Two numbers multiply to get the last term and add it to get the middle term. So you need to figure out the products, in this case, of 36. And which two added together will give me the sum of my middle term, which is right here, of 20. So what's highlighted in red will be your correct answers, 2 and 18. So all you're doing is you're putting those solutions in parentheses, which is right here in red. Okay? Now if your leading coefficient is not 1, you're going to do what we just did with, with our step-by-step -step going through the homework. You're going through this process, okay? When A is not 1, when your leading coefficient is not 1. So this was the whole step-by-step -step process. So when you're dealing with factoring, you always ask yourself the first question, do I have a GCF? If I have a GCF, that means I need to factor out my greatest common factor. Then put everything else in parentheses. Then sometimes you might have to look inside the parentheses and say, hey, can I factor that even further? Okay? So we basically did all this. Um, they did have a homework assignment, which I can't put on the website, but I do have copies of. Um, the top of it was, said 9-4 and it was a practice section, there was nine problems, and the students only had to pick four. Okay, so all together they just had to pick four problems, and then they were done. Okay, and as a closure, it was just a quick, you have your thinking map, let's go over some clarifying points, let's go over some clarifying um, sections with the leading coefficient not being one, so we just had a little brief discussion. For next class, we're going to have an open notes quiz. So that will be for May the 6th and May the 9th. Um, after they finish with the open notes, then I'm pulling some of the seniors to get started on their projects. But on May the 10th and the 11th, it's going to be their last summative assessment. So as I said, it's real quick. So seniors for the rest of that week of the ninth, they're going to be working on their final exams. Um, underclassmen are going to get started on their quadratics, the transformation of the quadratics, um, parabola. And you'll probably see examples of that um, through the next lesson. So again, if people have questions, concerns, not sure, need clarification, you guys need to come during Wildcat Hour or just ask more questions in class.